All right. Uh, so uh, the Turtle Zircons at uh, um, Jack Hills in Western Australia, we've heard a little bit about them um, today already. And uh, so these range in age up to around 4.4 billion years, and they provide uh, the current best known um, archive of material for looking at the Hidian crust, however much of the Hidian crust they represent. Um, and so in this project, we've been trying to take a look at uh, maybe getting uh, a more systematic view of the sorts of alteration that has been uh, affecting the Jack Hill zircons over time, because uh, the zircons are uh, hosted in a three billion year old conglomerate, which uh, is known to have undergone um, several metamorphic and fluid flow episodes um, over its lifetime. And so uh, there are uh, many uh, useful geochemical systems uh, in Zircon that have been uh, ex exploited to give us information about the early Earth. Uh, we've heard about the uh, um, lutetium hafnium system earlier uh, in this session, um, and oxygen isotopes as well. Um, and uh, there are also uh, many trace elements uh, that, are, uh, that provide very useful information um, about the uh, magmatic context of the zircons. Um, and uh, I'm going to be focusing on trace elements in this talk today. So uh, in particular, uh, there are several trace elements that vary systematically with uh, magmatic compositional um, evolution and uh, temperature, um, and in particular, uh, hafnium, uh, titanium, and the ratio of thorium to uranium. Uh, titanium, in fact, uh, uh, forms a, a very nice uh, crystallization thermometer uh, in zircon. Uh, and also, rare earth elements provide uh, some uh, very uh, useful information. Uh, so uh, on the right here, I have uh, an example of a rare earth element uh, diagram with uh, several example uh, zircon rare earth patterns. Uh, and in the bottom here in black is sort of a typical uh, terrestrial terrestrial uh, crustal zircon, where you have a fairly low uh, light rare earth elements, uh, more abundant heavy rare earth elements, this sort of a, a steep slope here, positive uh, anomaly in cerium, negative anomaly in europium. Um, and then uh, there are various other patterns that you can see often uh, um, in zircons that have been altered by various uh, mechanisms. You can have this sort of high, uh, more flat, light rare earth pattern, uh, and indeed a sort of, sort of flat rare earth pattern overall. Um, and so uh, the, uh, many of these uh, signals can be obscured by alteration. And uh, various uh, types of alteration have been uh, either identified or proposed for the Jack Hill zircons uh, in uh, past studies. So for example, here, uh, uh, this is uh, several um, uh, ion images uh, taken on the IMS 1270 at UCLA that are overlaid on a secondary electron image of a Hadean zircon. And this shows, uh, this is a concentration of titanium here, and this shows that titanium um, is uh, heavily concentrated along some cracks in Hadean zircons such that uh, if you were trying to place an uh, ion probe or, say, laser ablation spot on a Hydean zircon, um, and you're not careful about if you're uh, ne in the vicinity of a crack, uh, you could easily get a uh, artificially high titanium um, and iron uh, content uh, from that spot. Um, uh, we also know that uh, many of the cracks in Jack Hill's zircons are mineralized by quartz, muscovite, uh, uh, various phosphates, and iron oxides. Um, and uh, uh, along similar lines, though I won't talk much about this, we've also been looking at some of the other inclusions uh, along um, in Jack Hill's zircons, and those that uh, intersect cracks are sort of uh, interestingly shifted in mineralogy uh, between the, uh, the uh, population that's not um, intersecting cracks and uh, the, uh, um, the suite that we find uh, mineralizing the cracks. So uh, that's uh, uh, rather interesting. They're uh, probably indicative of partial or of alteration of some of that uh, um, uh, population. Um, and so, uh, and also hydrothermal alteration of zircons. So hydrothermally grown or altered zircons often have a, a sort of characteristic high flat uh, light rare earth pattern. Uh, this uh, is also true of, a, uh, of some of the Jack Hill zircons. Uh, this uh, high light rare earth pattern has been noted. Um, and uh, Hoskin in 2005 uh, uh, proposed that this uh, was uh, indicative of hydrothermal alteration in some of the Jack Hill zircons. And it's known that hydrothermal alteration can also affect the uh, oxygen isotope uh, composition of zircons. Um, Trail et al. 2007 actually found lower delta-018 along cracks and in discordant regions, um, uh, showing that there could be some effects there. Um, and there are also a variety of uh, processes that have been seen in uh, various zircon populations around the planet. Uh, uh, one important uh, um, thing to note is that uh, metamictization, so uh, accumulation of radiation damage um, over time can lead to um, uh, amorphization of the zircon crystal lattice. Uh, this makes a fluid ingress um, 
uh, much more likely secondary mineralization, uh, chemical alteration, and uh, particularly and uh, if the zircon is later reheated, uh, some of that radiation damage can anneal, uh, and this can. Uh, reset the uranium lead clock fully or partially um, and uh, alter so, uh, some of the chemical um, um, uh, contents of the zircon. And so this is just a, this is a plot of uh, uranium content versus this is fission track age, so somewhat of a um, low temperature phenomenon. And uh, between completely amorphous and uh, nicely crystalline zircon lattice, there's a large transitional region where you can get uh, uh, increasing amounts of radiation damage. and. Uh, um, various uh, uh, chemical effects, possibly uh, with fluid ingress. Um, and various uh, features have been um, uh, identified in uh, uh, altered zircon populations. Um, uh, many aqueous features, uh, you can see uh, sort of uh, uh, cross cutting features in um, cathetoluminescence images, cross cutting uh, original magmatic zonation, um, variable trace element responses there, uranium lead resetting, uh, solid state recrystallization can also result. Um, uh, which can also affect the uh, uranium lead and uh, many of the trace elements. Um, uh, so ultimately what we want to do with this project is uh, what, uh, find out what is the unaltered geochemistry of the Jack Hill zircons. Um, and more proximately and along the way there, we want to talk about what uh, sites uh, do we see alteration at in the Jack Hill zircons. Is it concentrated along cracks? Uh, et cetera. Uh, what styles of alteration do we see? Do these uh, correlate with any uh, systematic changes in the geochemistry? Um, and also, can these styles of alteration be attributed to specific processes? Um, and in the future, it will also be interesting to see if these can be attributed to specific uh, timing. Uh, so for our samples, uh, we are, um, for the most part, looking at a non-metamict Jack Hill zircons from the discovery site conglomerate. So here's, uh, on the top here, uh, some cathetoluminescence images. Um, We've, uh, uh, we range from those with a magmatic oscillatory zonation to those with, uh, this is looking a little patchy and uh, faded here. Um, and uh, so we, we were taking from across the uh, um, range of ages found in this conglomerate, which is from about three to uh, um, up to about 4.4 billion years. Um, we have oxygen isotope and uh, trace element uh, measurements that we've made by ion microprobe at UCLA, um, for, uh, for which we have been able to take cathetoluminescence images before and after um, and uh, to check what sorts of uh, zonation are in the area where we put the spot, and also secondary um, electron images to make sure that we, uh, to see if we were or were not in a crack or otherwise. Uh, um, sort of uh, strange looking region. And then uh, several studies uh, before this have also um, made note of this textural information. We also um, compiled data from those studies as well. We also have a smaller data set of uh, uh, metamic Jack Hill zircons with average uh, several thousand ppm uranium, uh, very uranium lead discordant and uh, lead lead ages down to about two billion years uh, for comparison. Um, and these are also taken from the Jack Hills near the discovery site conglomerate. And so uh, there are indeed some trace element contents and ratios that do uh, that are significantly different in uh, these um, uh, these regions where that are not cracked um, and not metamict um, and versus the uh, known metamict regions and the spots that we found had fallen along cracks. Um, and so, uh, for, for example, we have here, well, this is cut off here, but this is actually uh, phosphorus versus uh, the neodymium ytterbium ratio. So uh, phosphorus uh, tends to be higher, um, unsurprisingly, in uh, these uh, more likely to be altered regions. Um, and re, uh, we're looking at uh, the ratio of the light rare earths to the heavy rare earths using the neodymium ytterbium ratio. Um, and that uh, also, unsurprisingly, tends to be higher um, um, among these uh, cracked and um, metamict regions. Um, the ratio of the heavy rare earths to the middle rare earths we're looking at with the ytterbium gadolinium ratio here tends to be somewhat lower, um, or it tends to be significantly lower um, among cracked regions and also metamict regions. Um, and we're also seeing higher titanium and iron contents um, in these uh, uh, along uh, cracks and in metamict regions, which uh, is similar to the earlier uh, ion imaging studies of cracks. Um, there were also some quantities that uh, were not significantly different between the um, uh, uncracked and cracked uh, regions, um, um, although uh, delta 018. Uh, overall, it's slightly lower along cracks, but not to a significant extent, and you can sort of see how much overlap there is here. Um, uh, the cerium anomaly uh, tends to be slightly lower along cracks. Uh, that's a bit more pronounced of an effect in metamict regions. Um, and also, thorium uranium uh, tends uh, to be uh, slightly higher, though not to a significant extent. Um, 
Uh, so uh, this is a look at uh, rare earth patterns uh, in our three categories. And though you can see there's a lot of overlap here, um, uh, especially in the light rare earths. Uh, unsurprisingly, we do see the cracked and metamict regions spreading towards uh, much higher light rare earths. Uh, and indeed, uh, some of them are uh, moving on into uh, overall very flat rare earth patterns. Um, and so uh, we've been, we've been uh, earlier looking at the shape of the rare earth pattern using um, sort of a ratios of, say, uh, terbium to gadolinium to get the heavy rare earths over the middle rare earths. Um, and uh, or picking a light rare earth like the endymium to ratio to euterbium. But what if we can uh, com uh, combine multiple rare earths and come up with a, uh, an alteration index that might be a little um, less likely to uh, vary with a single um, uh, concentration? Um, so we're thinking about um, first, uh, so we've got this, uh, this is a sort of a whole rare earth element um, uh, index here where we've got euterbium and uh, typically uh, in a zircon you see a, a very steep uh, uh, slope here. Uh, where So you would have a very uh, high uh, uh, euterbium to neodymium, euterbium to samarium, uh, gadolinium, et cetera, uh, ratio. And uh, what we've done here is we've added these ratios together to sort of get a crude area um, uh, under this curve. Uh, and we've done the same here with uh, ratioing uh, gadolinium to some of the light rare earths. Uh, we have excluded cerium from this analysis so far because it can also vary with uh, um, oxygen fugacity of a melt, as shown by Dustin Trail and others. And, uh, so we don't want to convolve those two effects at this point. Uh, so how does this uh, alteration index uh, behave? So um, we've got the uh, total rare earth alteration index here, uh, the light rare earth uh, here. Um, and uh, so there is a lot of overlap uh, between the categories, um, especially between the uh, uncracked non metamict regions and the uh, uh, spots that fall on cracks. Um, uh, however, uh, the, these indices do display uh, differing relationships uh, with other geochemical tracers. In particular, here I'm showing uh, this is uh, the apparent titanium temperature and uh, uranium concentration. Um, so uh, the, there's, uh, in particular, an interesting or useful break in slope here. Um, uh, very different trends in uh, this, uh, the alteration index versus uh, uh, titanium temperature, uh, and also especially much more dramatic uh, versus uranium, uh, where with uh, the higher uranium contents, you're spreading towards this uh, uh, far more altered looking uh, compositions, um, as you would expect with uh, increasing you know, uh, radiation damage, increasing uh, um, likely alter likelihood of alteration. Um, and so uh, very briefly, uh, among our uh, analyses that are not on uh, cracks and are in non metamic regions, uh, we do see several different uh, types of uh, patterns here. We have, uh, these are, uh, there are laser ablation pits here that are unrelated to this study from another study. Um, so uh, briefly, we do see sort of patchy zonation. We do see some uh, bright cross-cutting features. Um, and regions that are more homogeneous and dark. Um, so the idea is eventually we will find distinctive chemistry here, possibly, that we could relate to certain um, processes. Uh, right now, we're seeing uh, a lot of overlap um, within these categories in our different uh, um, geochemical indicators. Um, and so while there are some altered regions that appear to have higher titanium, thorium, uranium ratio, and phosphorus uh, than uh, those with magmatic zonation, um, uh, at this point there aren't uh, really significant differences um, between them statistically. So we have low sample numbers for magmatic zonation and, the, and some of the various um, like the bright cross-cutting features, uh, patchy zonation. So uh, with uh, gathering further data, it will be very interesting to see where this goes. Um, and so uh, I'll leave you with our sort of preliminary conclusions where we do have uh, several uh, very useful uh, trace element indicators of uh, crack and uh, metamictization related alteration among the Jack Hill zircons. Uh, the similar chemical trends for cracked and metamict surfaces support similar modes of alteration, which is likely fluid ingress. Um, and this uh, comports a lot with what we see about phosphate and uh, iron oxide mineralization along the cracks, and it's likely that this has occurred in uh, many of the metamict regions as well. Um, around 50% of the analyses on cracks um, do overlap the uncracked regions, and uh, they probably still reflect their primary composition. So um, with further study, it's possible that we will be able to re-add these um, back into the uh, Zircon data set uh, to um, augment that if they're still showing their primary um, 
composition. Uh, we also propose uh, rare earth based alteration indices for zircon. Um, and in future, we're going to uh, take a, a closer look uh, with a larger sample set of whether specific uh, alteration zonation patterns correlate with particular chemical effects. And are any of these indicators more universal? Do we need to uh, use these alteration indicators only at Jack Hills, or can we apply them uh, more widely in the zircon record? Thank you. Okay. So we have plenty of time for questions now, because the next speaker is not here, so <laughs> if you have any questions. Yes. Yep. Uh, yeah, so that, that is interesting, and um, it's, um, you know, it would be interesting if there is indeed, um, if there's a primary compositional um, difference, like between, um, uh, within the uh, Jack Hills population between um, uh, the higher temperature and lower temperature zircons and the content of light rare earths, that would be interesting, but the fact that there is a, a correlation there, I don't know, I would want to uh, go back and look and see if there are, if, you know, the light rare earth uh, index uh, correlates with other, you know, um, hafnium also um, tends to change with magmatic um, evolution. So it would be interesting to see if that's a magmatic effect or if there's uh, some other process going on there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, that, um, that, that's a very good point. And uh, the, the fact that we are seeing the higher phosphorus contents, um, that, that's something that would be good to take a closer look at the, um, we know that there's monazite um, in, and also xenotime in some of the cracks. Um, so taking a look at some of the, the higher phosphorus regions of the zircon at a closer scale, um, yeah, that's something we definitely want to look at. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, um, I haven't um, I haven't put together that uh, uh, that yet. That would be good to um, look at. Yeah, that would be, um, I, I do want to look at that. That's, uh, I don't know, it would be uh, interesting to see, um, it would be interesting to see that. Yeah, the, and, uh, yep. Any other question? Yeah, so it's, um, I mean, uh, I guess uh, you, you're less likely to see that in the, uh, the concordance, um, but uh, I, the, the regions with higher uranium are more likely to have undergone ancient lead loss. So, um, I mean, there's a, it will be interesting to look closer at uh, the uranium correlation with various of uh, these indicators and uh, uh, versus um, especially the ones with a uh, different uh, CL zonations among the uh, um, non-cracked, non metamic surfaces and see uh, if there are any effects there that we can see. Um, uh, especially with age, uh, it, although that, you know, they, they, they span uh, 1.5 billion years, but it would be, it would be good to look at that, yeah. <laughs> 